today we're going to be talking about properties. Properties are just some of the, I guess, rules that govern what we can and can't do in math. Something that's important to notice as we're going over these is you will only, for now, see addition and multiplication of these properties because that's the only thing we're talking about. So these properties that we're going to use, um, subtraction will not work with them, division will not. There's, like, I think one exception to identity, but we'll, don't worry about that. Just, just know that for the most part, addition, multiplication, that's all we're using them for. Uh, and as we talk about them, it's also important to sort of prioritize what we're looking for. What, what is much more important is that you know how to use them. And I'll tell you what that means in a sort of as we go over them. The, what's less important is that you know the name of the property. The names can get really confusing as you go back and forth trying to sort of remember what each thing is. Try to get the, the idea behind it. That's more important than the name. And then if you get the name, that's good. And whenever I use that name in class, you'll know what I'm talking about. So what this property is, here's the big idea before we even introduce the name is, basically if you look here we have the 3 first, the 7 second. 3 plus 7 is 10. Well over here we have 7 first, 3 seconds. 7 plus 3, also 10. You notice we get the same thing on both sides. Basically what this is is whenever there's just addition, you can add it in any order, always. So if, instead of 3 plus 7, if it's easier to do 7 plus 3, we could do it that way. And that is called the commutative property of addition. It also works with multiplication, so I'll go ahead and show you that. 2 times 5 is the same thing as 5 times 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 2 is also 10. That's the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property just means that you can add or multiply in any order. Doesn't work with subtraction doesn't work with division, but it always works with addition and multiplication. I'm going to go over to a math dictionary if I can find it here. So, and we're going to just find that. And this is something you could Google. I'd Google math dictionary for kids, and it puts it in pretty easy to understand language if you're ever trying to figure something out. Um, let's see. Commutative law is the same thing as commutative property. So here's the definition. This is what you should have in your notes. In addition to multiplication, numbers may be added or multiplied together in any order. So here's the addition example. A plus B equals B plus A. 6 plus 2 equals 8. 2 plus 6 also equals 8. That's commutative. Also, you see the multiplication example here. This is another property. Um, if you notice the actual terms, the numbers are in the same order. 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4. What's changed in this one is the parentheses was around the 2 and the 1 but we moved it to be around the 1 and the 4. If we just reason through this, we know we do parentheses first. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. On this side, 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 2 makes 7. It's the same thing. That's because of the associated property. What the associated property says is whenever you have just addition, and we'll see in a second just multiplication, you can move the grouping symbols, in this case parentheses, you can move the parentheses around. So if, I want, if it's easier to add 1 plus 4 before 2 plus 1, we can do that. We can add 1 plus 4 first instead. We can just shift those parentheses over. It also works with multiplication. And here we have 7 times 8 first, then times 6. But let's say that you know how to multiply 6 times 7 better than 7 times 8. Well, you can move them because it's just multiplication then multiply by the 8. You'll get the same answer. If you have division or subtraction anywhere in the problem, that you cannot use the associated property. It's only multiplication and addition. Let's get the definition from our dictionary here. Go to the A's, associative, and here's the definition. In, addi in addition to multiplication, no matter how the numbers are grouped, the answer will always be the same. And you can see the example here. 4 plus 2 plus 6 is the same as 4 plus 2 plus 6. And the multiplication example. And we're almost done here. It's another important property as we get into things that you're, you're going to see. This one's pretty straightforward, though. Most of you already know. You just didn't know it had a name. If you add 0, it doesn't change the number. 8 plus nothing is 8. This is called the identity property. I'm going to scroll that on. 
identity is kind of who you are, that's your identity. And so for the identity property, the identity of this number is eight and the identity doesn't change. It stays in eight. Who this eight is stays eight. So if we add zero, that's true. And if you th think, you probably already know how this works for multiplication. Like what would you multiply to the number and not change the number? Well, it's one. Five times one is five. That's the identity property of multiplication. And to get a good definition of that, we'll go right back to our dictionary here in the eyes. And you can see the definitions of both. And if you're writing your notes, you probably just need this little first sentence here. Adding zero won't change a number. Multiplying by one won't change a number. That's the identity property. Last thing here, and it's already scrolling up. Um, if you take a number and you add the opposite of that number, you get zero. That's called the inverse property of, and I believe if it scrolls up the rest of the way, it'll be addition. You may want to underline inverse, such, such an important word. And another word for inverse is opposite. Basically, if you take 17 and add the opposite, which is the inverse, you get zero. And from our dictionary, we go back to the eyes, inverse operations, opposites or reverse operations.